Welcome to crystallinfo.co.uk Get Going Guides. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at making uh, a custom web page or blank web page for which you can start to build your own personally designed site rather than using a template that we looked at last time. So I'm in the new document section of Freeway which is where we had all our templates. We chose the charcoal one in the last one and it's got this blank website uh, to open up here if you want to make a blank site. So if we just click OK on this it will work exactly the same as uh, a template. It will give you a file name that you want to save. You can change that and then you just need to choose a location in which to save it. And then up will come the page which will always come out at the default 960 pixels wide by 720 pixels deep. If you want to change them you can just click on them and type a new number into there and push return and it will change the size for you automatically. But let's see what uh, has happened for it. It's exactly the same as the template. A blank website folder has appeared on your desktop where we saved it. If I open that up then there will be a freeway document that's made there. That was the file name we called it, blank website. Uh, and then inside there will be a media folder there's nothing in there yet. Uh, you would need to copy all the images and sound files and videos that you want to incorporate into your site into that folder. And then there's a site folder where all the HTML and other content will be made for it. But it's sort of a bit limiting uh, using that method because it uh, gives you a standard uh, size to work from. So what we're going to do now is close that off save that and then we're going to ask for another new page and we're going to look at custom so this is gives you a bit more control over the size that you want to use uh, on your websites so first off it wants you to look at what kind of HTML do you want the site to be written in I wouldn't use HTML 3.2 unless you want something a bit basic but if you're going to send an email form then I would probably stick to 3.2 because everything can read it and you don't want too much sophisticated rollovers and JavaScripts working uh, on an email form. So, But if you want to make a website with a lot of functionality then I would stick to HTML 4.01 transitional. I wouldn't, I would avoid the strict because it restricts some of the code that you can use on it. Most people recommend the transitional uh, through development. Uh, or if you want to use XHTML which is a more modern form of HTML and includes things like XML scripts and stuff uh, into it, uh, then I would use the transitional one again. For most sites you could stick with HTML or XHTML and you can experiment with those to see what works and what doesn't work for you at at a later date and you can change the code on each page or for the whole site uh, a single button later on if you change your mind. So I'm going to stick to HTML uh, 4.01 then it gives you some specifications of what are standard page sizes for you to work at. So if you want to send an email form or create an email form then you want to make it fairly small so 560 pixels wide by 720 pixels deep if you're going to work on a small screen, these are people who work on 800 by 600 monitors. Uh, these are generally used in offices or in other countries around the world, not in uh, Europe generally, uh, but more in third world countries, um, where they use 5 by 4 screens, uh, 800 by 600 resolutions. Uh, a lot of offices use that. If you want to work for some more modern machines, then 960 by 720 is very good uh, for uh, some uh, I small desktops and small laptops uh, with wide screens or indeed for iPhones uh, but if you're going to be working for people who generally be working on a widescreen powerful computer whether it be a Mac or a PC then they will have a large pixel uh, resolution uh, for that. So really you need to choose this depending on what you think your end user is going to be because if you look at 1200 by 960 on an 800 by 600 screen you're going to be scrolling around a lot so if in doubt I would stick to the 750 by 500. I've set up a custom one which is 770 by 560 um, and the reason it's not 600 deep is because you need to allow for all the menus and things for that. So what we've got here we have then spe specified a site folder. The site folder is where is all the HTML code going to be kept. But we haven't made one yet so we need to make one by ourselves. So we're going to go back to the finder and we're going to make a new folder. 
and I'm going to call this custom site and then inside this folder I need to make the other folder so I need to replicate uh, what we had in the other one so I'm going to have media and then I'm going to have another one Ooh, move that out and I'm going to call this site folder so that's where the HTML will be kept so it's exactly the same as the blank website apart from we haven't created the document yet uh, for there so now if we go back into uh, freeway we can click on here and now we can select the folder that we want so we're going to go into custom site we're going to get site folder and we're going to choose that there so and it tells you there where it is you can change this at a later date if you want to move uh, the folders uh, for you so then we've got the resources the standard is separate resource folders uh, which means for all the sorts of different content it makes a resource folder where all the pictures will be in one folder the videos in another folder uh, and it creates uh, a nice easy way to find so if you've got subfolders in your um, website architecture it creates a separate resource folder for each one it keeps things easy to find you could have a common resource folder where all your resources no matter how many folders you've got through your site all the images and all the videos all sit in one folder which if it's not a very big site uh, can be quite uh, a useful and easy way to do it if you've got a very small site you can keep all the resources with the HTML files so they're all bundled together if you've got a very large site or even a medium site it can sometimes be very difficult to find the right file that's or an image or replace something within it so generally I, I tend to stick with separate resource folders uh, but a common one if I'm using a very small uh, website then we've got uh, file names so Freeway will generate all the HTML code for you so what kind of file names do you need if I'm working on a very old machine uh, old server with using a DOS operating system I'm restricted to eight characters in file length and I used to use the .htm uh, suffix at the end of it but if I'm on more modern uh, servers like a Linux server or Windows server or an Apple server or Unix server then I can be a bit more uh, creative in the words that I use as long as I don't use spaces and freeway will sort that out for you you need to get this information from your uh, host of your website uh, that you're going to send it to but generally all of them will use Unix or Windows these days and that's it I've set up all the information I want uh, for my site and I just click OK and then up comes the page for it. Note on the page on the inspector, this is the inspector for the page, the first page is always called index.html or htm if you're using the DOS. I'm going to have the alignment so it's going to be centered so no matter where in the browser it is the whole website will be centered uh, within it and then I want to give the page a name so my great first site so and that will appear in the header at the top so then all I want to do is to save this file just close it off and save as and I just need to specify where it's going to go so I'm going to put it in a custom site so I just want it to sit there like we had before and again I'm going to call it custom keep putting spaces in the E's today uh, custom website there and then I just click save and now when I close that off I go to here there's my custom website I've got media to go in there I need to copy in and I've got a site folder there so that's how you set up uh, your pages uh, and your site so you can start adding content to it we'll deal with adding content at a later date uh, on other tutorials uh, the next tutorial will be how do you specify your server details so that you can upload it via FTP to your server. Um, visit me at chrislinfordco.uk uh, or see me on iTunes or on YouTube and I hope to see you for another episode.